Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nilsson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Lots of cracks, no further. <laughs> this looks like a good place. That one back there in the corner is a little wet, so I think we'll, uh, we'll fish here. So today I'm obviously fishing with Calvin Schweel and we're on Lake Erie. Uh, we made the big run east from Minnesota this week and you know one of the reasons we're out here on this great walleye destination is this is a trip two years in the making almost. Uh, last year we waited too long and the weather got warm, there was a big snowfall and we lost our opportunity to come out here on Lake Erie and get into what was the bite of the century last year. Heard a lot about it, yeah. A lot of big fish hit the ice and we didn't get a chance to take part in it. And uh, we wanted to make sure we got here early this year. So it's third week of February. Obviously we're not deep into the season yet, uh, but we're really hoping that we're gonna be able to get out here on Erie, learn more about this great fishing destination. Neither you or I know anything about this body of water. It's been 10 years since I've been out here in a boat, so. We're gonna throw some stuff against the wall and see what sticks, and uh, we're definitely hoping that today we're gonna be able to get some gigantic walleyes on the ice. So Lake Erie, it's a walleye factory, open water and through the ice, so stick around with a little luck. Uh, Kel and I should have some big fish on the ice before this is done. Let's get some augers going. I hear an airboat or a helicopter. Yes, that is definitely an <laughs> airboat. That is the way to travel out here, no doubt about it. I wanted to share with everybody uh, the general idea or planning that we're operating off of here as we get started today. I mean, this is our first time here. Uh, potentially somebody watching the show might be thinking, you know, you're gonna wanna try to do this. So we're gonna take you through the steps of uh, where we launched and how we got out on the lake. And uh, we just left uh, McGee Marsh. It's a rally point launching area right near Port Clinton. Uh, very large facility. Let me tell you, it was just packed with rigs and trucks and trailers this morning because Lake Erie does attract a lot of attention this time of year. And uh, there isn't an official ice road that comes out of uh, McGee Marsh, but there is one that's being used by uh, all the fishermen that heads basically straight north. And we've been instructed that that's the road we wanna take uh, to get out towards deeper water. Now the general idea here with how the fish move in Lake Erie is uh, they spend their time out east and then come uh, late winter in towards the spawn, they move back towards the western basin. So they've gotta come through the islands that protect the western basin out here on Lake Erie. And we're trying now to push out as close as we can to the islands without getting into sketchy ice. And that's always a challenge out here on Lake Erie. And what we waited for was the word that Lake Erie was really iced up. We didn't wanna get into a situation where we had to worry a lot about wind direction causing travel issues. It's pretty common out here early in the season on Lake Erie where you'll get a wind out of one direction, it'll move the ice sheet. Uh, being a first time Lake Erie fisherman, we wanted nothing to do with that. So uh, we've got everything locked up. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna see how far out in the lake we can push towards deeper water where we think those fish are gonna start 
coming in from the eastern basin and try to get on some big fish right away here this morning. So that's the information we're basically working from. Uh, McGee Marsh was a great place to launch from and with that ice road that fishermen had basically uh, trampled down over the last few days it was a great place for us to get out on the lake as a first time fisherman here on Lake Erie. Oh geez look at there. There's one. I haven't seen a fish since I moved out here. I just turned around to act, ask James if he's seen anything and oh there you go. Lake Erie walleye, crush a jig and wrap. I just turned around to ask James if he's seen anything and I haven't seen nothing here and I was just about ready to grab the auger and move on but I'm liking this, it's a nice chunky walleye to get the morning started here up on Lake Erie. It's pretty cold so I'll get this one back right away. Wow, what an interesting morning. You know, drove all night through the night last night to get out here to Lake Erie and Port Clinton and just fishing amongst the vast flat area and these walleyes are just chasing a bunch of bait fish here and you see a little flicker on your screen every once in a while and all of a sudden you get a, a racing walleye just come up and smoke it. You know, using aggressive baits this morning. Uh, I'm using a number five glow jig and wrap here. Big swoops to uh, call these fish in. Um, Axe imitates like those bait fish and um, I've seen one other fish this morning that just blew by my, my jig and wrap and this one finally committed so a good start and I think we need to drill a few more holes. I'm on it. Already. Craftsmanship and precision are just words until you add driving passion and a knowledge of what defines rod building excellence. Tuned up custom rods are built with a perfect blend of rod balance and action. A truly custom experience achieved only with the highest quality materials. From the handle to the last guide and every thread wrap in between, it's these components along with an attention to detail that makes our customized rods a tuned up custom. Fish. Looks like a really good fish. Yeah, that rod looks like it. I'll get the locator. I'll grab the locator. Get that thing out of there. <laughs> Thank you. Feels like a good one. A really good one. A lot of weight to it? Yep. Not like anything I've felt in a while here. I'm going to go back real. Just to be safe. I got my big, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Just in time. You kind of start to get that feeling that, okay, this one's going to take off, and she did. Right there, so I got the back reel on. This is two weeks in a row where this is kind of like uh, first time stuff. First time for me last week, upper red lake crappies. But this is a whole different deal here. <laughs> yeah. This is a big walleye. Oh. Yeah, she came up. It was one of those fish that just kind of come up real slow, worked around that jigging wrap two times, and the third time it just covered up that bait and just barely kind of felt the rod tip load up and the fish was there. Another thing we got to be careful with here, James, we get to the hole. I know we're fishing by a breaker and we get that sheet ice underneath mm -hmm. there, so. I think we those, might be right at the bottom now. And those fish can, can you see her? I can't see her yet. Dude, she's just kind of sitting on something. There. Big walleye? Yeah, it's a big walleye. I can see that, just the back part of her. Let's so see if I'll, I let her just kind of sink down a little bit, okay. pull away from the hole. I'll try to. Yeah, we got that sheet ice in here, and what that, you know, at one point the ice broke up and it got stacked on top of itself. The auger's through. There's a couple things that could have happened here. She might have wore the line into a groove at the bottom of the ice, but I can feel her going up and down, so we're not hung. Cal, will you do me a favor? Would you drill me another hole over here and grab my LX9 and drop the camera down just to see what she's doing? Okay. I know it's a long drawn out process, but she's a big fish. I'd put her like right here so we can get it nice and close. Without question, that fish is still there. Talk about delaying the action here a little bit. If it ends up being like a sideways hook, two or you know, 20 inch, I'm gonna be a little surprised here. Direction. Look at that. Can you see her? Yeah. What's she doing? Just laying on her side. I think that is a really big fish. You can see her. Right yeah, there on she's there. so close. All Did right, you? I'm gonna do something really bold here. Oh, oh, oh. She's so close. Yeah, I can see her. She's in the camera here. There she is. 
No, she's stuck. She's stuck. <laughs> she's literally between the ice sheets now. She's part way up the hole. Yeah, I think you're gonna have to go back down with the rod tip and try to turn it to the side. This is crazy. This fish is definitely, just by the size of its head, it looks like it, it's definitely worth it. Well, the problem here is she's in between the ice. Here she comes, here she comes, here she comes. Oh, look at that head. Holy <laughs> smokes. I got you the got rod. the rod? Yeah, I got the rod. Yes! Oh, oh, what a giant! <laughs> I cannot believe these somersaults that we went through to land that fish. Awesome hole. I don't want to fish here anymore because that's just too much. That's nonsense. Real quick, as long as you got her out. You know, I got a little bit better than 30 inches without her tail pinched. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. She just smushed that jig in her app. Good. Yep. Man, is it cold. It's cold out here for her. It's cold out here for me. What a fish. All right. What an absolute giant Lake Erie, man. <laughs> that was awesome. It's so cold that I'm going to get her back before we even think about frostbiting her. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, man. Okay, she's good. I just wanted to make sure she didn't take a left turn yeah. between the two sheets. I've never seen anything like that. Absolutely just nerve wracking to see that fish both on the camera and then at the bottom of the hole and not be able to turn her and then get her up the hole and have her take a left. I mean, to be clear what's happened here, um, we had like a windy day and it broke up the ice. Uh, there was a big heave around here somewhere and the ice got stacked up on top of itself. So while most of the ice out here is eight to 10 inches thick, right here it's about, three feet thick and then there's a break of about a foot, foot yeah. and then there's another foot of ice below that so that's what caused it really made that just real challenge to get that fish caught and get and it's up all, to the ice. it's all over i mean we've we've drilled enough holes in this area where you break through think you're good to go drop your lure down and it doesn't go any further we got to keep going through that that sheet ice which is next which you know these breakers lake winnipeg we fish around the breakers i guess lake erie is the same thing fish around the breakers and that makes it a much more of a challenge than i want to deal with but we did it. I'm not going to be able to do anything with these hands for a little bit, so it's going to be in to get some heat on yeah. them, but that was an incredible fish. Made this trip worthwhile, and we're just getting started. Absolutely. Woo! Cold. New for 2015, the release of the WX 1910 from Skeeter Boats redefines the features and performance anglers can expect from a 19-foot boat, including the torque transfer system, making the hull on the WX 1910 the strongest ever built, the React keel, enabling unparalleled boat control in tough conditions, and integrated jump seats for the ultimate in seating flexibility. Visit your local Skeeter Boats dealer and see for yourself why no other 19-foot boat offers more advanced features, storage, and performance than the WX 1910. Drag. Tighten the drag a little bit here. There. This one feels much better. Get this transducer out. Oh yeah. Stuck right on the bottom of the ice here. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's a Lake Erie walleye. Check out that baby. Woo! This is what we came out here to make this drive for. I don't know, we probably got a 25, 26 inch fish, but we got some super, super cold temperatures right now. I know this is a trophy fish and I'm gonna do everything I can to get this fish back real quickly here and talk about the lure in just a second, but look at that healthy fish. Look at that, fills up that eight inch hole, no problem. Awesome fish. You know, this lure's been talked about quite a bit this, we fished a little bit this fall, but once again, that jigging wrap, we had to downsize a little bit today. We're using that number five, um, using the blue and silver. Um, just tipped it with the minnow head and it seems to be making uh, these looker fish into committing fish. Uh, that big fish right there is proof. Uh, once again, the versatile jigging wrap doing its thing. Whew, that is chilly. All right, so now this is what I'm fishing. Number five, blue, silver, blue chrome jigging wrap. And I'm tipping it with a full shiner. That's uh, unusual. Back in Minnesota, we probably wouldn't do that. Uh, we'd fish it with just the uh, shiner head. 
But I tell you what, uh, these walleyes out here on the area, they're something special. Uh, they love big baits, and of course they are really big fish. And it seems that having that full shiner on there uh, brings in more fish, gets you more opportunities than just the shiner head. So you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Here he comes. Oh yeah. Holst, I think I got a good one here. I'm coming, Can't I'm coming. Over. Want to grab that locator? I'm faster on the snow than I am <laughs> on the ice, trust me. <laughs> Boy, it's been a while since I've seen, actually seen a fish, and we've just been moving and grooving out here, and... A lot sun, more moving, <laughs> less grooving. <laughs> the sun came out, and you know, this is a, a fairly a fresh hole that was recently drilled here, and... I feel a lot better about being out here in these conditions now that the sun's out. Yeah. Than about 45 minutes ago when it was it looked like it was going to oh, snow. Yeah, this thing's dogging big time. A jigging wrap, you know, that we've been using. It's got those two outs, the hook on the tail and hook on the head, you know. We got 10 inches of ice out here. Um, I want to be close around the hole here with this fish. Oh. I've got good news and bad news. Good news is it's a walleye. <laughs> no, now I've got better news. It's on <laughs> You own him. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nice fish, man. Perfect. Awesome. Look at the size of that fish. You've had a couple like that today. Yeah. Beautiful fish. You know what? You know, the numbers are certainly down. And I think this weather pattern that we're in right now has definitely got these fish less active, but the size like this makes up for it. I know that big one that you got. I'll put up with a lot of <laughs> shortcomings on a bite if fish like that are coming through the ice. Just chunky, just obviously sitting out here staging for that spawn that's gonna happen, you know, relatively soon. Look at that fish. Very nice. And that Pretty. was on the uh, number five gold black? Yep, Taking gold wrap. black. Bye-bye fish. Big tail swoops, just big. Of, you know, we, we don't have a lot of background understanding for this body of water. I mean, we're, we're doing the best we can to kind of absorb it all. It's a huge body of water, but there are some fisheries that we do have experience on that are kind of similar. Uh, Winnipeg, for, you know, first and foremost, that's the one that jumps to mind to me that fish is very similar to this. And if we've done one thing today that uh, we're using, we're drawing from our past memory banks, it's fish in these heaves. You know, there's not a lot of snow out here on the lake. Uh, you're gonna have real good light penetration to any place that there's no snow. I'd say it's probably about 60% just ice. There's a few areas that have snow on it. And then when you get these heaves, it busts up the ice and you get ice, well, kind of built up on top of itself in those areas. And you know there's a lot less light penetration there. So out here, there's, this is what we know. We've never been out here before, so we know this. Let's, hey, let's give this a shot. You know, we've got, that's the third fish that's over 26 inches today. That darn nice fish for never being out here. And this is our learning. This is an opportunity for us to learn. Next time we come back out here, we can just add more to that learning curve. Well, hopefully we continue to catch big fish and I hope we don't run into any more issues with the piling, the right. piled up ice where we almost lose fish. You know, we, we didn't get that big one up top, but man, it was close. Yeah, I've never close. had that happen before. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna a bit. punch some holes probably uh, up along the line here. Okay. I mean. I, I don't know if there's going to be a pattern here and going to catch a bunch more like that, but it's uh, definitely worth try trying it out. Proof is on the ice there. Craftsmanship and precision are just words until you add driving passion and a knowledge of what defines rod building excellence. Tuned up custom rods are built with a perfect blend of rod balance and action. A truly custom experience achieved only with the highest quality materials. From the handle to the last guide and every thread wrap in between, it's these components along with an attention to detail that makes our custom ice rods a tuned up custom. There's fish. Oh yeah, deep head bends. I love that. We made this move shallow for the evening. I don't think he's a giant fish. Thinking that we'd have a better chance at getting in a strong bite right here at the end of the day. This is my second fish to come in. The first one hit and I missed him. This one clobbered it. Oh yeah. Come on. Haven't seen the ice jump up and down yet. Whoa. So I know he's getting close. Maybe he's bigger than I thought. Wow, that's a pretty good fight. <laughs> Come on. All right, here he comes. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. It's no 30 incher, but he's not bad either. Maybe, just maybe, this move shallow is gonna pay off for us here. This fish was very aggressive. You know, both Cal and I have seen quite a few fish today 
that came up and chased real energetically, like they were gonna just cream the baits. And at that last second, the fish just pulled off. That was mostly middle of the day. Here tonight, we're hoping that they're gonna be far more aggressive. Of course, it's still really cold out, so I'm gonna let this fish go without gawking at him too much. There we go, that one's gonna release great. My fish. There's something you don't see every day. 10, 11 inches of ice, we got an airboat heading by us. Get out past those sister islands out here on Lake Erie, the ice gets real shady, real thin, and a lot of the locals are using those airboats to get out and fish out further into the lake and, and, and get out by themselves, and that's definitely a good way to get around. Different, I've never seen one like that. There's a fish. This is getting cool, man. <laughs> That move definitely pays off, huh? As it's supposed to. Good one, need some help or you got it? I don't have those massive head shakes going on, but it's not like you catch any small fish here, man. Here he comes. Just gotta work him around that. Oh, it's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh yeah, come here, fish. She got that chicken wrap right on her snoot where she could get me. Another beautiful, beautiful fish. These are considered eaters out here. Actually, some uh, out here would tell you that uh, that's just a youngin' yet. So Cal and I were talking that since we live so far from home, or since we are so far from home, we're not gonna keep any fish. There we go, that one wasn't going anywhere. Great fish, probably in that uh, 22, 23 inch range. I tell you, I'm hoping we just continue to see more and more really, really active, aggressive fish like this. You know, middle of the day, we had a lot of fish that snubbed baits. Uh, these last three fish that have come in for me, I've just absolutely crucified them, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. So we'll let that fish go. Of course, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to see a couple giants like we had earlier in the day. Cal's been on the big fish run. And so have you caught anything smaller than about uh, seven pounds today? <laughs> Not today, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's quite a run to be well, on. Well, take that back. I did have that one early this morning, that first fish right away oh, this morning. Oh, that's right, that that's was, right. Forgot all about that. That would have been one of those nice eaters, you know, right. if we would have been in the mood to keep fish, but. Well, you, I'm sure you'll understand why your big fish stick out in my mind more than the little <laughs> one did. Well, before we lose all of our shooting light, we're gonna have to call a close to our day out here on Lake Erie. Uh, we have covered a lot of ground and punched a lot of holes. And uh, just like anywhere else you go, uh, you hit a cold front and even the Great Lake Erie can throw you a curveball. Now, we had some awesome fish today. I mean, nice I cannot quality. complain <laughs> about the size at all. Uh, we iced some big, big fish. But uh, numbers were hard to come by, but uh, I don't know what you think. Uh, kind of got a feel for how the system works. And I'm really looking forward to coming back the next time where it'll be a lot more comfortable ground. We're told uh, three weeks from today. Uh, we've yep. talked to some really cool people here locally. Uh, most of them out here on the ice today. Uh, very helpful, very knowledgeable. And uh, everybody seems to be biding their time. Three weeks from today, they say 10 pounders all day long. All, all day long, yeah. And it's, I mean, that's Lake Erie's known for it. You see it in April in the boats. Uh, you see guys catching five fish for 45, 50 pounds, you know, that's the, the math is big fish. And we've, we've caught big fish today, they, they've been there, so just the wonderful cold front that keeps following you around. I am Captain Cold Front, so. Well, from Cal and I, hope you really enjoyed today's show. Uh, looks like the best is ahead uh, for everybody that's gonna get out here on Lake Erie. Uh, should have a wonderful finish to the season because the uh, guys are telling us that, like last year, they've got some great ice conditions. So from Calvin Schwiel and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. See ya. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.